Deputy Speaker, I may be able to eat a fair sized meal, as you can tell by the size of me, but I'm happy to admit that I'm not able to eat $4.5 billion worth of lamb, which is the value of our lamb and mutton exports. And I call the member for Hunter. Thank you, Speaker. I rise to speak on the Export Control Amendment ending live sheep export by Sea Bill 2024. Succulent, juicy, tender, delicious, scrumptious. These are all words that I and any other meat lovers associated with the wonderful meat called lamb understand. But now there is a new word to add to this list jobs. And there'll be thousands of them, Deputy Speaker. You can't beat Australian lamb. We have the best in the world. We've known this for a long time, and now the rest of the world is catching up as well, Speaker. But sometimes we can improve the way we do things, and sometimes making these improvements will benefit the entire industry. The live export of sheep is one area of the industry that can be improved. In April 2018, media outlets aired footage showing approximately 2,400 sheep dying from heat stress and overcrowded conditions on board the vessel Awasi Express. This made it clear that something needed to be done. That's just too much, and what a waste of great tasting meat that is as well. And instead of these sheep dying humanely and being sold for consumption, they had to suffer in horrible conditions and become inconsumable. I wouldn't wish that sort of suffering or pain on anyone or anything, not even one of my favourite sources of meat. Deputy Speaker, I may be able to eat a fair sized meal, as you can tell by the size of me, but I'm happy to admit that I'm not able to eat $4.5 billion worth of lamb which is the value of our lamb and mutton exports. That's a lot of roast dinners, Speaker. Combine that with our $3.5 billion domestic retail market, some of which I may be responsible for consuming, and it's clear that this industry is extremely valuable to our economy. We would never do anything that puts this industry at risk. We're about creating jobs and not taking them away. But just because there is a better way that things can be done, it doesn't mean it has to be done at the expense of jobs and at the expense of a thriving lamb industry that we have here in Australia. Changing the way that we export our lamb does not have to change the fact that we reap huge economic rewards from this industry. In fact, it can bring opportunities for even more jobs to be created right here in Australia, which means the industry will grow to be even bigger than it already is today. So don't believe all the doomsday cries from those opposite. I think everyone will believe me when I say I love lamb as much as anyone of those opposite me right now. So of course I appreciate and understand the importance of our lamb industry just as much as those opposite. But the difference is I just want to see it exported in a way which avoids the suffering of the sheep. And I truly believe that this can be done and achieved in ways which bring even more benefits for the industry right here in Australia. As a government, we know that this needs to be a transition and it needs to be done in a way which does not come at the expense of the industry. We are committed to making sure that this transition is managed as smoothly as possible. We also want to make sure that we make the most of every opportunity for jobs that will arise because of this change. We expect that sector to adapt, which will see more <coughs> sheep meat processing in Australia. Value adding can also increase farm gate returns. It keeps jobs right here in Australia, not overseas. It boosts regional development right here in Australia, not overseas. It's good for jobs, it's good for farmers and the industry, and it's also good for the delicious tasting sheep. I know that this issue has two very passionate but different arguments, both in favour and against banning live exports. Some want to stop it straight away and others want it to continue. 
And I understand both sides of this argument. I've met with many people and spoke on both sides of this argument with them. But the live, the live sheep trade today is not what it once was. Live sheep exports by sea have already declined to just 10 per cent of what they were just a couple of decades ago, Speaker. It is currently a market returning $77 million a year. $77 million a year market is still one that is extremely valuable, but this just allows us to make those changes more smoothly without devastating this industry. The numbers show that the industry is booming. There is no need to worry about or fear about its future. But there is plenty of reasons to feel optimistic about growth that will continue to be created. This decision hasn't been made lightly, Deputy Speaker. The bill aligns with recommendations of an independent panel appointed by the Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries Forest and Forestry to consult with the stakeholders. The independent panel undertook extensive public consultation on how and when the phase-out could occur, including engagement with more than 2,000 people in person and considering 4,100 submissions and survey responses. It's in the best interest of sheep and the industry to legislate a firm end date, Deputy Speaker. We think that this is the best for producers, businesses and markets, as it allows all stakeholders to make business decisions with a level of certainty and work within clearly defined timeframes of the closure of this trade. If they know how much and when this, if the, sorry, if they know how and when this is going to happen, they can be prepared for changes and in a strong position to make the most of new opportunities that will come in the preparation of the meat here on our shores. And these opportunities will come, there's no doubt about that. It is also important to remember that this ban isn't happening overnight. This bill will instate an absolute prohibition on the export of sheep by sea, but not until the 1st of May 2028. Should also be remembered that the bill only applies to export of live sheep by sea and will not restrict live export of sheep by air nor the live export of cattle. We are not leaving those impacted in the dark. We, are, we aren't introducing this legislation and then walking away from the issue. The bill helps us to deliver a $107 million transition support package which helps those affected by the phase out to be well positioned, resilient and ready for when the trade ends in 2028. This support package will do, do this by assisting sheep producers and supply chains, increasing processing capability, enhancing demand for sheep products in Australia and overseas and diversifying agri-food markets in the Middle East. This transition away from live sheep exports will lead to an increase in the domestic processing. This means one thing, Deputy Speaker, jobs and thousands of them. By processing our meat here, we will need more people on hand in businesses like abattoirs and businesses that deal in the transportation and packaging of lamb and meat. But not exporting live sheep, sorry, by not exporting live sheep, those jobs would have been done by someone overseas after receiving our shipment of sheep. We will now be doing it right here in Australia, keeping more jobs on our shores right here in our country. Speaker, by phasing out live sheep exports, our already glowing reputation, reputation about our lamb industry will only get better. The sheep being consumed by international customers will be of higher quality because the sheep will be in better condition having avoided the crammed, hot and stressful environment of being exported on a ship alive. A happy sheep equals a great tasting meat, Deputy Speaker. We will stand with the industry and we will be here to offer support to anyone who is impacted, every step of the way to make sure that there are no losers as we move towards a better way to export our sheep. There is a lot of time between now and 2028 
when the ban comes into full effect. And we'll make sure that we work with everyone that we need to to make sure that this transition is as seamless as possible. Our agriculture trade is a vital part of the Australian industry. There is no doubt about that. But, this rea but the reality is that we must do more things in the Australian way, in the humane way, and we must exercise our humanity when we are conducting our businesses. Live sheep exports simply cannot provide that and cannot comply with that. That is what we have committed to on successive elections. It should come to no surprise to those opposite that this was always going to happen once Labor was in government. We've said it, it's been an election commitment. So this is definitely no surprise. As I said at the start of these remarks, even the Liberal Party themselves, even the Deputy Leader of the Liberal Party herself, thought it was time to phase out live sheep exports. That's why she introduced a private member's bill on it. But like what often happens from those opposite, they say a lot and then when push comes to shove, aren't willing to follow through on what they apparently stand for. But we will do what's right while ensuring the jobs and livelihoods that are impacted are supported within this process. We have given time to be able to support those who are now, who are no doubt facing a difficult time in this transition. I take no joy in knowing that there will be people impacted by this. We don't shy away from that, but it does mean the end to the practice that frankly has been unacceptable for far too long. There have been too many awful instances of animal cruelty. That will all come to an end. We will transition away from live sheep exports and there can be, no, and there can be better ways that are taken advantage of what we will do this through this ordinary, orderly transition process. The Australian people have made it clear that they expect a government to uphold the standards of animal welfare. We don't need the live sheep export trade. It's been shrinking, it has, been, it has had too many chances to repair itself and it has not done that. This, will, this bill will bring an end to live sheep export. It is an important reform, one that we have committed to for the last two elections. The Labor government, just as we said we would, is introducing this bill. Speaker, there's a lot to gain for the whole industry if we do this properly. This bill gives every opportunity to get this right for jobs, for farmers, for Australians. Everyone has heard the phrase, get some pork on your fork, but I say go and feed the fam some lamb because this industry isn't going anywhere and I reckon the jobs are about to boom. This bill is good for industry, good for jobs and good for the delicious tasting sheep. I commend this bill to the House.